Buddy Economic Ninja here. I thank you so much for joining me today. I have a real special treat. And the, the special treat here is Darren. Darren uh, is running a, a Twitter, a very popular Twitter uh, space called Graffiti Kings. Darren, how are you doing? I'm good, Ninja. And you, my man? Yeah, I'm doing great. And I'm really excited to meet you. You, uh, Darren actually reached out to me because he'd seen some videos about me talking about Generation Z and wanting to help teach these younger generations how to gain real wealth in the form of silver, gold, uh, cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, decentralized cryptocurrencies that are breaking us away from the legacy financial system being fiat currency. Um, so Darren, let me ask you a question. Uh, you were telling me before this how you got your start um, with the Graffiti Kings and NFT space. Tell me about how you started as a kid uh, doing graffiti. So yeah, I started doing graffiti in 1983 at the age of 10. Uh, I had seen, well, in fact, some a few brothers had come back from New York on a, on a trip with their parents and they had taken photographs of what was going on in New York and that was all the vandalism on the train system. And uh, their parents had explained to them how, what these kids are doing and that they got nicknames. And uh, cut a long story short, within, uh, within minutes, we've, we've now got nicknames. And we've now, we're trying to copy all these photographs and of all this, all, of all this artwork that we'd seen on the trains that had been produced in the early 80s. And uh, yeah, and, and the love for creating art just spurred off from there. Yeah, so you said um, earlier to me that um, when you decided to, to take this um, out to the world and try and help uh, younger people, you were met with not a lot of opposition. As a matter of fact, it was quite the opposite. Tell me about that. You started helping kids and then even government started contacting you. Yeah, so uh, yeah, 1983, vandalism. Then up until the mid 90s, obviously growing up, getting a bit more older. Uh, and I've, I've, got the, I've got the chance to create some uh, youth workshops in my local borough, uh, helping kids with problems, do something, do something constructive and creative with, with the time that we, we can give them. So uh, we started using, started creating these graffiti workshops that got so popular that uh, we then got overshadowed by a government body called the DETR that came and evaluated the work that we was doing with these young kids. Uh, they saw that it was a great success and how popular it was that they then created a report and this report went out to all the local governments in the UK and within days, my phone and emails just went through the roof. And uh, I was contacted by near enough every other local government in, uh, in the UK to create the same similar uh, projects for them, which now, we did. Yeah, let me jump in real quick. Um, well, let's explain to the audience that might not understand exactly what's going on. First off, I can't stand uh, vandalism. I can't stand it when somebody goes and destroys and defaces uh, someone else's property. However, you are finding a way, because I've noticed before, like on the side of trains, I'm like, oh, wow, that is some amazing lines that they're flowing through and writing messages. And, and I mean, there's a lot of contrast and color being used these days. And so what you found is you found kids that needed an outlet, but you needed to give them a canvas. So you decided to bring in their, their skills and say, look, let's, let's hold off on the side of a, a wall or an interstate. Let's, let's go to the side of a building and let's take your art to the world, right? Yeah. And that's what happened. So with that endorsement, uh, because railway, because again, graffiti is obviously associated with the railway infrastructure. Uh, again, within days, uh, rail companies from all over the UK got in touch and they gave us train stations to, to paint murals on, which we did. And uh, yeah, it, this, seriously, it went, it went crazy. And then, yeah, obviously we started working with other brands all over the world, uh, even Royals painting in palaces. And yeah, uh, and, and I've always carried on working with young kids, doing workshops, going into prisons. In fact, yeah, right now we're working with a local youth prison, going in there, teaching art. And then, yeah, then I obviously got into NFTs uh, last year when we had that market market crash, the, the, the jib jab dip. That's a good way of putting it, Darren. <laughs> so, um, you know, so you and I both have a love for getting breaking out of the system. And, 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 and getting rid of the slavery, the, the bondage that uh, honestly all human beings have been put in lately. And you found just recently, like you said, when the market crashed in a, the spring of, a, what was it, a 2020, 
you started to realize that there was something way bigger outside. So let's talk about NFT. Um, I've, I've admitted before, I've said, look, this is a fad, this is going to come and go, but there is fundamental um, uh, reasons why the NFT space is taking off. Um, it, it's, it's the ability to record art and the ownership of art. And um, so let's talk about that. And because I want to talk about the amount of money some of these kids are making and then how we can help them. And I, and I hope that my subscribers and anyone on your channel is listening to this to get these videos out because our intention is to harness the, uh, the energy, the talent, and then the power of the money these uh, uh, anybody are making and, and literally destroy this debt slavery system. So, so let's talk about NFTs and how much money can be made in these. And what are these kids doing to make this money? All right. So, well, let's, let's use my use case as an example. So I got into NFTs uh, mid last year. Uh, again, we had the, we had the crash. Then uh, I had to research about uh, protecting my wealth. And that's when I started researching gold and silver, purchase gold and silver. And then I started learning more about blockchain and Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies and within months i sold my house uh put everything into crypto which is a gr great move so far and as long as the market does what it's supposed to do it will be worth even more but yeah so i started finding about blockchain and uh and crypto and obviously this whole ecos this whole thing around crypto is not just about a currency uh there's other there's other models create industries that have to be built on top of this, of these coins to make it to make it work and to make these coins go around and have utility and value, uh, and, and NFTs being one of them. Well, NFTs is going to be used for everything. Everything's going to be tokenized at some point. But right now, what's fueling the NFT space is is art. To the point where, a few months back, you've got the likes of uh, I'm not sure the correct one, but you've got like uh, Christie's or Sotheby's, these big art auction houses that out of the blue are now selling digital well jpegs if you like jpegs for like millions upon millions of dollars it's like what the hell's going on so anyway so there is a so the fact that the art industry is now behind this space and helping fuel this this narrative of these things being valued being worth something it's helping this space become valuable and it is and, and going back to my case I got into NFTs in, yeah, mid last year. And in that time, uh, I've raised over 1 million pounds in sales, well, $1 million in pounds worth of crypto to put into these projects that I'm creating called the Graph Punks. Uh, it's a project for, again, we're going to be helping young adults getting into this space. If you're, you don't have to be an artist, uh, again, because NFTs aren't just about art draw artworks it could be photographs it could be a great photographer you know and you might want to take great nice great stylized photos and turn them into nfts and in fact we've got a, a friend of ours that she's into a, a, is it equestrian into horses yes she's taking photographs of her horses and she's creating nice little stories to go with the with the horses and stuff wow. and she and she's and she's and she's selling them so yeah anything can be sold in fact there's a uh, YouTube videos at the moment with the, the guy from, is it Mr. 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 Nice Guy or something from Shark Tank? Oh, yes. Yeah. Kevin O'Leary. Kevin O'Leary. And he's talking about, he wants to, he's into watches, rare watches. And no one can own these. No one can see these watches or own these watches. And he's, speak, and he's speaking to these people that own these watches about turning these, taking photographs of these watches and turning them to, into NFTs. So now you can own these watches, the NFT of these watches. Okay, let me stop you here because this would be a great time to stop the interview because we're going to do a part two and we're going to break down a little bit more of the mechanics and economics of NFTs. But it, what you're saying, I guarantee you there's some people maybe uh, older, uh, maybe not so into cryptocurrencies, their eyes just rolled back in their head and they say, why would anyone pay this? So we're going to do a part two on this because I think it's very important because we're going to break down why people would do this. Is there a mania? I do believe there is. Is there utility? Absolutely. Um, but we're going to break it down and go into how we're going to help uh, these this younger generation. And I want everybody that's watching this to please uh, share these videos because I don't care how old you are. Our young people are the future of this world, and we plan on doing something, me and Darren, together, okay? So with that being said, Darren, thank you so much for this video, and I'll see you at number two, okay? Top man. All right. The Economic Ninja Guys is out.